Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining our call, uh, our talk today. I'm Mike, this is my colleague Maria, and we are talking about auto grading today. Um, before we get into the NLP and all the difficult stuff, let me ask a simple question. Who of you likes grading? Who enjoys it? Okay. But it's, I've only seen two um, <laughs> hands, and the reason is it's typically very tedious and boring, and it doesn't get more fun if you have to grade hundreds of uh, tests. From a like school perspective, it's very expensive, labor intense, and students also don't like it because it takes a lot of time to get uh, them feedback and it's also prone to human error. You have to go back and uh, kind of get the corrections on your gradings. So what we need is auto grading and how do we do that? There are many tools out there. Um, most of them use a black and white, a black or white approach. So you have a model solution, you compare a student answer to the model solution, and if it's right, it gets full points, otherwise nothing. And this would just not work for higher education. So what we have done um, is like thinking carefully about how can we um, kind of state a typical question in an assessment so that it can be graded by a computer. And the answer, uh, the answer is actually pretty simple. So you can transform any problem or task into the following kind of formulation. Find an instance of entity type such that conditions CI hold. And with this approach, we can grade everything like multiple choice uh, questions, free response questions, and also all kinds of interactive other question types. To get a better idea of um, what I mean by this entity type and conditions, I am um, sharing an example here. We created a tool called Creo that's um, based in Mathematica, and uh, it allows you to set up uh, questions. And here we have an example, I hope, Hope you can read it. Um, an example question, name a city within 300 miles to London, which is outside the UK. And um, to grade such a question uh, automatically, uh, it would not really work if you just, or if you try to, to set up all the possible solutions to that question. Um, in Wolfram Alpha, there are more than 150,000 known cities and yeah, so it would just not be fun to do that. Instead, um, what we do is we specify um, what is this thing, what we are looking for, the entity type, and in this case, it's a city, and then we set up conditions instead of uh, stating like um, the model solution. So, um, this is what is done here in these like two uh, lines of code. So the given answer is taken and um, yes. Is it better now? So again, here, here was just the question, name a city within 300 miles to London, which is outside the UK. And now we're transforming this using two conditions. Condition number one is that the geodistance from London to the given answer of the student is less than 300 miles. And the second condition would be, in this case, the, it's not within the United Kingdom. so. With that way, we can also uh, distinguish like several like partially correct states of a question. So let's try this. 
Okay, so what you see here is um, on the web using the, the Wolfram private cloud. And now I can go ahead and type something like Paris. And to make it a little more fun, do also say Tokyo. And let's do it another time using oh, Glasgow. All right, and now we already have the grading results. So in this case, Paris is correct. And if we look at the details here, we have the first condition evaluates to true, the second to true, and that's why we end up with three out of three points. If we use Tokyo, then <clears throat> the first condition would not be satisfied, so we have a partially correct, and so on. Um, that's the idea of condition-based grading. It works for everything. I use it for grading like um, coding challenges and um, we use it for statistics and, and all kinds of different fields. It can be used on images and uh, Excel sheets or whatever, you name it. Now, this is a really uh, powerful approach. Oh, what happened here? And many educators would like to use it. Um, by the way, if you're interested in um, using this, um, please visit silver.ac or come talk to us. We have a workshop tomorrow where we go into a little more details on like how to use it uh, for teaching. Today we focus just on the grading, but if you're interested, please feel free to reach out. Um, so I've talked to many educators in the last couple of years, and uh, so what they said is this is this is cool, but they are a little frightened of like writing those conditions, like writing these lines of code. For someone who is new to the Wolfram language, this can be like a little tough. So our idea was maybe we can derive those conditions um, using NLP, using the same kind of ideas that, that's been used in, in, in Wolfram Alpha. That's that's one um, main motivation for this project. So we want to remove the coding barrier for educators. And the second one is also we want to challenge the purely statistical approaches of uh, auto grading and um, trying to combine it with something like rule based, um, trying to understand the grammars in plain English. So here is an example, and we want to, with this in, 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 in uh, trying to, to achieve this, we want to start with simple problems, with so-called math word problems. So they are used uh, in elementary school, um, and here is a typical one. John found uh, 70 seashells on the beach. She gave Sam some of her seashells. She has seven, uh, 27 now, how many seashells did she give to Sam? And um, so this is a, like a typical math word problem and we want to grade this automatically. Uh, what um, we want on top and which is also, what is already um, uh, kind of implemented in Creo and our grading approach is that we can parameterize it so we can use different names, numbers uh, for each student. And what we don't want obviously is to calculate this uh, manually um, and to write the code. So what do we need to do? Um, for any plain English question or task statement, we need to parse it, we need to derive those conditions and the model solution, and then based on that, we can do the actual evaluation of uh, student answers. So this is already um, 
implemented in the platform, um, the, 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 the grading approach. Today we focus on the, the first two points and Maria will now uh, explain you how we do that. Thank you, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes? So this is our approach. First, we have the input sentence, which is exactly the one Mike showed before. And then we are allocating the sentence to either um, addition, subtraction, division, or multiplication. And after we have flagged the operator type, we are automatically creating a grammar rule. And then we apply the input sentence to the grammar rule and with the derived solution, we compare it to a correct one from the data set. And then we get the results, either it's true, false, or failed. And based on false and failed, we are improving our model. So let me introduce you to our data set. It's called aggregate and consists of 1,492 arithmetic word problems. Here you see an overview of the operator types. And for this project, we are focusing only on the single operator problems. And we did some text structure analysis based on comparison by distance matrices. I have a link in the appendix if you want to read more into that. And we found out that there are 713 different text structures, but looking at the same one, they were grammatically quite different and used also different operator types to derive the correct solution. And then we did some part of speech tagging sequences. And we, we analyzed the text structure based on the part of speech sequences. And there we found out that there are 1,318 different text structures. So the data set is pretty heterogeneous and the questions are not that similar to each other. So this is a specific example of our data set. It's exactly the same sentence as before. And we have the equation, the correct solution, and then we took out the question part itself. This one we are using for the location. And also, we, here we have all the sentences with numerical information. This one we are using for the grammar rules. So now we have the input sentence and we want to allocate it to its operator class. There we tried two methods. One is using keywords. So we checked whether the question cons um, contained any of these keywords. And there we got a rough overview of the results. It can be improved. But for now we are working with this 286 correctly allocated additions for the later steps. And we also use the classify function. And when we used the four operator types, we got an accuracy of 46. And when we split it to either addition or subtraction versus multiplication and division, we got an accuracy of 89. Now we are want to create the actual grammar rules. I'm not sure if you're familiar with grammar rules, but this is a simple one. So you have the fixed order then the grammar tokens, your given name and city, and then the actual rule, so x arrows y. And we have to cloud deploy the grammar rule. And if we, if we insert the sentence which matches the structure, it will give out this expression. So here, Michael goes to Zurich. And how we are using this is with the following steps. So first, we do part of speech tagging. And then we're creating these grammar tokens. And then we create the whole left hand part of the grammar rule. And based on these, we will create the right hand side of the grammar rule. And combining these together, we are creating the full grammar rule and deploy it to the cloud. So here we can see a specific example. Tom has nine yellow balloons, Sarah has eight yellow balloons. 
now we are doing the part of speech tagging. I'm not sure if you can read it, but it says Tom proper noun has this verb, nine is a numeral, and so on. And then we are doing the left-hand side of the grammar rule. So we are creating grammar tokens. And in front of the semantic numbers, we got the variables A and B here. And based on that, we are creating the right-hand side of the grammar rules. Because we know that these are addition questions, it's just A plus B. And after that, we create the whole grammar rule and deploy that to the cloud. And if we use the same input sentence, it should give us the correct solution, 17. And that's also the solution that the data set gives us. And now thinking back to the teacher, she wants to change the name, the numbers, and the objects, right? So we can use the same grammar and just use the same sentence structure, and it will compute us the correct solution. So now we applied it to these 286 correctly allocated additions. And from these 283 cloud objects were created. And 130 were true, 41 were false, 112 failed. And we want to learn from these false and failed ones. So why are they false and why did they fail? So one of the reasons is that in the first steps where we do the part of speech tagging, you see that the number four is not recognized as numeral, but as adjective. So if we do a grammar based on that, it will give us a wrong solution. So here's, it's nine, but because it didn't recognize the four. Now we are changing this 4.0 to four, and then actually it will be recognized as numeral. And we are cre uh, creating a new grammar. And for the application, it doesn't matter if it's 4.0 or 4, and we get the correct solution. So we changed this in the data set. And you see we got a little bit more truths, a little bit less false, and some of the fails, yeah. Too few fails. Another reason is why the grammar f is false is because the sentence is more complex, and it contains irrelevant numbers. Like this one, we are currently not able to compute it. But if we extend our grammar rules and make more refined rules, I think we'll be able to do that. And you might ask why grammar apply failed. And then and one of the reasons is because we have some technical issues. I posed a question on Stack Exchange, if someone can help. Please help. <laughs> and another one is currently have we have limited all proper nouns to be given names, which is of course not true. It's also citizen things. So to recap, we want to allocate the sentence to its operator type. We want to automatically create a grammar rule. And based on the false and failed analysis, we want to improve our model. So in the appendix, you have the source. Yes. So we are sti that's still work in progress. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, please let me know. I think time is almost up. Yeah. We're happy to take questions. <laughs>